Hi, welcome to Caribou Country Lifestyle. My name is Cheryl. Today I am going to be making some sauerkraut. I've never made sauerkraut before, but I had these four split cabbages and I figured, well, this was the best way of using up these split cabbages without having them just go to waste. So what I did was I cut up all the cabbages and quartered them. I took the core out, I took the outer leaves off, but there was quite a bit of um, leaves that were affected by it being split. And so you would have some black tinge on the leaves. So I cut out all of that, picked all of that out, and I needed, this recipe called for five pounds of cabbage and I actually ended up out of the four cabbages I ended up with six pounds of cabbage so I've already started shredding this I'm just using um, one of these shredders to um, thinly slice the cabbage up as I'm shredding it I've already got my bowl is almost full so as I'm shredding it I'm adding a tablespoon of sea salt which i have here in total i'm putting in three tablespoons of sea salt to the six pounds of shredded cabbage so i'll continue shredding this cabbage once i have it filled i actually purchased um one of those stone crocks i went uh when i went to saskatchewan to visit my sister two years ago uh, she took us to an antique secondhand store and I found a uh, crock and I've washed it all up and everything. So I have this crock here and this is what I plan on doing my sauerkraut with. So like I say, I'm going to continue shredding up this sauerkraut. I've already added two tablespoons of the sea salt and when I'm finished shredding up the rest of this, then I'll add another tablespoon. I have to be careful because I don't want to, this is a very sharp blade in here. Once I get down to where it's close to my fingers, then I use a guide. And I have this guide here and I just clamp it on and I continue to shred and that way I don't lose any of my digits because that would be bad. And then if I find that some of the pieces are a little too chunky, I'm taking them out and I will just cut them up into thin pieces with, I have a sharp knife here, and I'm gonna cut them up into thinner pieces just at the very end and I will deal with that when that time comes. So just continuing to shred this uh, mandolin works pretty good. It's still I'm a little leery about when I start getting close to where my fingers are. I just have to keep remembering. Make sure you put the guide on and then continue to shred. I will continue to shred this. I'm making a bit of a mess here, losing some of my cabbage. And uh, I'll come back when the when I go on to the next step. So I'm just thinly slicing up these last little pieces that I couldn't shred because they were just getting too small to handle on the mandolin. So I'm just taking my sharp knife and thinly slicing up the last little bit of this cabbage and then I will add it to my bowl and then I will put the last tablespoon of salt on the cabbage. So I'm just going to add this onto here without losing too much of it. Put 
that piece out. Okay, and there's a piece right there. Okay, so we will add another tablespoon. This is the last tablespoon of salt. And that, this is a medium coarse sea salt. It didn't say uh, what kind of sea salt, like if you had to use a fine grind. So I'm just using up this medium coarse salt that I've had for a while. So uh, I just photocopied this recipe and it's uh, vegetable ferments. So we've sprinkled that on and I added about three tablespoons of the salt and if you want you can add other vegetables it says here like carrots, onions, garlic. Um, I might actually add some garlic into this because I do have some garlic that I could put into it. So I think I will do the garlic and I am going to also add some celery seed. Uh, two big cloves of garlic. I got this garlic from my sister uh, from her garden and then I also put in probably about a teaspoon and a half of celery seed That's how much I had left in the jar. So I was like, yeah, let's let's put her in there So I am just going to mix this up with my hands. I don't have a lot of room in this bowl but I just want to Said to mix it up. So I'm gonna mix it up the best that I can in the bowl and you're trying to, I'm just gonna squeeze it and mix it because the more, it's like the rougher you are with the cabbage, the more that that salt is going to mix in there and then it'll make the brine and sauerkraut is so good for your digestive system. Um, I have acid reflux, so I have been wanting to make sauerkraut for a few years now. And when I bought that crock two years ago, I, with the intention that I was gonna make myself some sauerkraut. And that was the reason why this year I had made sure that I had lots of cabbage in the garden. I had 12 cabbage plants in the garden. I said to add carrots, and I probably would have if I had some in the house, but I actually ate my last three carrots that I had in the fridge yesterday for lunch. So, okay, I think that's pretty mixed up. So I'm gonna bring my crock over here and I, because it's been sitting downstairs for the last, uh, well, last summer and I got it the summer before, I made sure that I washed it all up and, uh, I mean, how long has it been sitting in that antique second-hand store? Also, i got to step over my grand fur baby. Cole likes, is not happy unless he's laying right in the way. And that's usually what happens. Whenever I start cooking, Cole just ends up right in the way. So I'm just going to add a little bit at a time because... In the recipe, it said to pack it down. So I am just going to pack this down. Some people will use one of those um, pounders. I've seen them, wooden pounders. I don't have them. So they said to, you can use your hands and pack it down. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. 
can smell the garlic, that's for sure. And I'll just pack it down. And add a bit more. I keep it in the crock. I seem to be dropping it around the crock. Okay, pack that down. Really good. I'm just using my fist and pushing down with my knuckles to put press it down. Okay, I'm gonna put some more in here. And I can already feel the moisture that's building up in this sauerkraut. Get this stuff off the edge. Okay. When I was shredding up the cabbage, I was dropping some and some of it was hitting Cole and or landing right beside him. And I think he thought I was giving him a treat doing that intentionally and uh, found out he does like cabbage. I don't know if it's because it was in small pieces, but that's why he liked it. So I'm almost done. Okay, I got this last little bit to push in here. And this is a two gallon crock. I wasn't sure how big of a crock I was going to need, but this one I thought seemed to work perfect. Okay, push that down. pretty packed in there. It's probably only about half full with how big that bowl was. And I'm just gonna wash my hands and dry them. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna bring the camera over here. So there we have it. Like I say, it's about half full and I have that packed down really good. And that looks really good. I'm putting a plate in here. They said to have a plate that fits snugly. Well, this plate just fits inside of this crock. So I'm putting that on there. And then I have to fill up a jar because I don't have, I don't have any special weights. I always see different, uh, I've read in the books too that I see about getting these weights and uh, using them. Well, I've seen how much these fermenting supplies can be. But also it says if you don't have it, there are other ways to get around that. And so I'm putting a plate in here that just fits. I'm filling up a glass jar with water and I'm going to put that on top and that'll weight the plate down. I've got a lid for it. I'm going to weight this plate down with it. Push down on it some more and then I have to cover it with a towel. So I just have these uh, flour sack towels and I'll actually just keep it in half and what that does is it keeps any of the dust and the bugs out of the crock and what I might end up doing because we have an abundance of fruit flies so I might actually find an elastic that I can have decided that I didn't have an elastic big enough to put around this crock. So I found one of these stretchy exercise things. And apparently I don't use it, so I'm gonna use that to tie around here. 
and that will also keep any of the bugs out. We have an issue with fruit flies right now after the summer and I have set up my, I'm not tying this like super tight, but I'm tying it so that the fruit flies can't get in underneath the towel. So I did make up a little fruit fly trap. <clears throat> So that's my fruit fly trap, that jar with the plastic on it. And inside there's probably about 30 fruit flies. So in the jar, there's just a chunk of a banana in the bottom of it. And then I put a snack bag that I opened up the sides and I sealed it down with the, the wide mouth ring and then I poke holes in the top of it with the pencil and they're just, it's just big enough that the fruit flies can get in, but then they can't get out. I'm gonna put so. this crock in a corner. It says it takes about 24 hours for the brine to start developing and just to check on it. But I'm gonna keep this in the corner of my kitchen over there. They said just to put it in a spot where you can still kind of keep an eye on it, but don't forget about it. So if I put it downstairs, I'm definitely going to forget about it. But that's it for my sauerkraut. So hopefully it turns out. I'll keep you posted on what's happening with my sauerkraut. And thanks for joining me, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.